Hey folks, so I'm now packed for the Indian Head uh, Antique Show, um, Antiques and Vintage Market, Indian Head Antiques and Vintage Market. i um, going to be taking these cases here, which is per usual. I usually take those cases all the time. And then I've got... Uh, several crates um one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve crates and a crate of paper stuff and some books as well as some manuals and such some car manuals and uh, user manuals and I'm going to take the that's one of the vending machines kind of a, a capsule vending machine there's a uh, prop there from a snow plane uh, the bags are just my uh, tablecloths gonna take the wood shaft golf clubs um, got a showcase and various other inventory and the Royal Bank sign is gone and these crates here is a lot of hardware and bins of stuff. So um, let's see. And I'm going to take this ball and stick uh, shelf that I just bought. I tightened it up so it's uh, a lot more sturdy than it was. So that's what I'm going to take. A couple days from now, it is uh, Wednesday, and I'll be leaving Friday in the morning, early morning for this show so that'll be the case yeah so wish me luck here we go okay so i got everything loaded everything except for luggage so all the stuff for the show anyway it's all loaded as you can see right to the front there that'll cover hopefully uh, the four five tables maybe six tables in the end getting an extra one hopefully so hopefully I'll have six a uh, couple short ones five footers but uh, we'll see anyway yeah so that's the load let's see around the other side so it's all level mm -hmm. not a uh, stacked up load or anything just flat but yeah so hopefully we'll do well guess we'll see the venue has six stairs up to it, so that's going to be an issue. But uh, apparently they've got some high school kids to uh, help. So we'll see, I guess. Otherwise, it's going to be lifting one at a time. So that's a lot of trips. <laughs> anyway, so the next bit you'll see is the show itself, or setting up for the show, that is. So I got here early. Um, about three quarters of an hour early, half an hour early, and helped set up tables, etc. So I've got my space all set up and ready. We loaded, or not set up and ready, rather, uh, tables are set up. And uh, I've got all my stuff set out. So now to unpack. Fun, fun, fun. So here's the booth. All set up. They've got these um, bulletin boards as well, which are handy. Put up some paper stuff, as far as I could reach, that is.
Bad Sabooth. So, fairly small show. Got um, about a dozen, dozen vendors, I guess. Thereabouts. Just the hall. So, we'll see how it goes tomorrow. So, it's been open for 20 minutes now. Just, oh, I don't know, a dozen people through the door. Um, not expecting a big rush this time, although I was hoping. But there's a car show on, and uh, there's over 200 cars outside, literally right in front of the building. So, I'm assuming we're going to get traffic from that. So, cross my fingers. There we go. So, I got back Sunday night, um, basically packed up in record time. Uh, took not more or not much more than an hour to pack up. Um, and an hour and a half, I was ready to go. Uh, all load and everything, they had people there to help uh, load, which was great. Um, always appreciate that, especially when you're doing a show on your own. Uh, really saves uh, some of the labor and uh, frustration of trying to get packed up and loaded. Um, I packed up my stuff myself, of course, but uh, loading-wise, it really helps when you've got uh, people to help. And, uh, yeah, so basically the report on the show. Now, how did I do? Well, so how did I do for those uh, three days? Um, because I did get there Friday, so there was some pre-sales there. Uh, grand total of $41 worth of pre-sales on Friday uh, to other dealers. And let's see, um, Saturday pre-sales before opening to other dealers was $270. So that's okay. Um, dealer to dealer sales is always a good thing as far as I'm concerned. I'm um, never afraid of that. I uh, don't mind discounting a little bit more for dealers when they're buying quantity. And let's see, the rest of the show on Saturday was actually uh, got busy in the end. Uh, as you saw in the video, there wasn't a huge start. wasn't uh, a lot of rush of uh, traffic in. But uh, ended up doing just over $1,000 uh, on Saturday. So with pre-sales and uh, pre-sales on Friday, that was about $1,350 thereabouts. Um, so not, not bad, not great either. Uh, would have liked to have done significantly more, but uh, I was really banking on Sunday because there was a car show that supposedly had over 200 cars happening and right outside on the street, the street blocked off uh, for a couple blocks and uh, vehicles on both sides of the street and in the middle of the street and such, I believe. I'm not sure. I never did get out, actually, to see the car show because it was just busy enough. People, enough people wandering in that uh, I never did get outside to, to uh, see the car show. Uh, but I figured we'd have a lot more people because of that show. Um, figuring, you know, one and a half people on average uh, per car so there should theoretically be 300 people that are into vintage you'd think if they're into vintage cars but uh, didn't translate into a lot of crowd unfortunately it was very slow on Sunday uh, disappointingly slow um, ended up doing a hundred and seventy five dollars on Saturday on Sunday so Grand total for the whole show was just shy of $1,600. So, what does that translate to? Well, you've got to consider that uh, hotel was $266. Fuel was another nearly $200. Uh, food was about $100. Uh, I had to 
put Jake in a local kennel, so that's a hundred dollars. So yeah, there's a good chunk of change there. So you take that off the off of it, but uh, well, first of all, you've got to consider cost of goods. So say an average of forty percent for cost of goods. Let's use that amount. Uh, so roughly um, forty percent of sixteen hundred. Let's see what do we got. Uh, I can't do it in my head at this moment. Six hundred and forty dollars is your cost of goods. So um, that leaves you nine hundred and sixty dollars. So let's take off uh, 266, uh, let's see, 960 minus 266, leave 694 to work with, uh, minus 200 fuel, minus 100 meals, minus $100 to kennel the dog, and we have $294 left. So, yeah, um, that was the profit. That's what's left. So, was it worth it? It was a three-day event, so I had to take three days out of my schedule, close the store, and I made, technically, $300 after expenses. Always consider your expenses. Uh, you never know where you're going to end up with these shows. Um, I don't think the poor turnout on Sunday was uh, the uh, promoter's fault or anything like that. It just didn't happen. Uh, advertising was good. There was lots of advertising. Um, maybe just because it's the first time, first show at this location that it didn't pan out. I don't know. Um, whether I should do it again, I'm torn. I did enjoy it. But $300 business-wise doesn't make sense. Um, if I could split expenses, split hotel, that would save me another $130 thereabouts. And split fuel, that's another 100 So I would save $250 thereabouts, $275, or something like that, uh, if I split expenses with somebody. So maybe, maybe that would help. But... Um, yeah, business-wise, it's not doesn't make sense to do the show again. Uh, business-wise, business sense-wise, doesn't really make sense. But yeah, uh, yeah, everybody was nice, great vendors, friendly vendors, and everything, but uh, just didn't pan out dollar-wise. So yeah, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, all that. So what do you do? Anyway, I do recommend the show if you're in the area or want to attend an antique show um, next year. Hopefully, they'll have it again. Uh, but this year just didn't pan out for, for me as a vendor. Uh, other vendors were happy. If I was local, it would have been great. Uh, would have been fine. It would have saved uh, a hotel and fuel there. So that would have been another 550 in my pocket. So, yeah. Um, very nice little town and everything, Indian Head. Um, we've got a neat little museum there as well. Uh, just a, a neat little bit of information. Uh, Indian Head hosted a Negro League team, baseball team there. So they've got some neat history as well. So should really check that out. Um, yeah. Anyway, I guess that's about it, folks. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and check out our other videos on antiquing, picking, thrifting, scrapping, etc. Take care, folks.